afternoon. Welcome back. Uh, locomotive Systems Training. We're, we're still on air brakes, so let's talk about air brakes. Air brake circuits, the equalizing reservoir circuit reduction position. This is LSTV-042. Hmm, a lot of cool information going out there. All right, let's take a look. Now, I got a little bit of a recap to kind of get you where we were so we get to where we are, where we're going to go. All right, the equalizing reservoir circuit was designed way back when to minimize, not eliminate, but minimize the, the serpentine effect of the air going through the brake pipe system. Um, it's it's kind of like a, um, a little bitty voltage controlling a great big voltage or a little bitty hydraulic line controlling a massive huge hydraulic system. So this is what this is doing. It's doing the exact same thing. So I'll kind of give you a little comparison of the two. All right, now before we go any further, like we always do, we got to find out who the players are in this circuit. Now remember from the last time, this dashed line here represents what? This debt represents the 26C automatic brake valve. That's one component. And we'll talk about the components inside here in a little bit, but right now I just want you to know that that is one component, just one. Okay. We also have down here right below that dash line a P2A brake application valve. That's used in the, in the penalty phase, uh, which is way down the road. Uh, we also have a 220 cubic inch volume reservoir. That is used to make sure we get proper uh, control of the air so the air is applied too fast to release too slower. That, that the air works just right. Also, we have a gauge, uh, and we'll talk about that, that rascal a little bit here later as well. All right, so our four players is this. Now, from before, if you remember the last video, we had talked about equalizing reservoir circuit uh, release and recharge position, okay? And this here, as it looks right now, is just a piping diagram of how this thing is all piped up and where it, where it is and where it goes. Now, in a second, we're going to put a little color to this, but I want to mention a couple of things. You'll notice up here where the regulating valve is and the relay valve is, which are still inside the automatic brake valve, both of these components have main reservoir air to them at all times. Uh, the main reservoir is there in the relay valve, the main reservoir is there at the regulating valve, ready to go to work when this automatic brake valve handle up here gets moved. Okay? So uh, it just depends on handle position, and that's a key point. I want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Handle position on that automatic brake valve determines everything that goes on in the automatic circuit. So, let's go ahead and do this. Before I go any further and put the color up here, I do want to mention a couple of things about the equalizing reservoir circuit. Remember, pipe, there's pipe 15. Let me get out of the picture for a second. Pipe 15 is known as the equalizing reservoir charge pipe. That's coming from the regulating valve going down and out, the automatic over the P2A coming up. And right here again, and we talked about it in the last class, this here is pipe 5. It's the equalized reservoir control pipe. Hmm, let's do that one more time. Pipe 15 is the equalized reservoir charge pipe. This is the guy that creates it, regulates it, and sends it down the line to do work downstream. Pipe 5 takes that air supply from 15, and he skins it over here, and he does the magic or does his work over here at the relay valve. Everybody got that? There's two pipes that are affiliated or associated with the equalizing reservoir circuit. Pipe 15 and pipe 5. All right, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and throw a little color into this thing. Boom! Well, <clears throat> if you remember from the last video, when this thing was all charged up in the release and recharge position, I had green air here, dark green air, dark green air here, but I didn't have any arrows. When it was fully charged, all these were just solid lines. There was no arrows on here. Remember, from the last time we had the class, arrows represent airflow. The the uh, the lack of arrows, I think, is a pretty good term we can use. Uh, represents that the air is done, has stopped its flow, is no longer moving, and the air at, w at whatever pressure it is is there. And again, this is all based on handle movement of the 26C automatic brake valve. All right, now, so what we did, let's say, and you know, there's different, there's different. Um, there's different handle positions of the automatic brake valve. Let's just kind of go through them, even though I don't have that, that document here, which you'll see later. <clears throat> you have release and recharge. A lot of people just call it release, but I like to use the term release and recharge because that's the only position where you're actually going to recharge the air brake circuit of the, automatic brake, of the automatic circuit. 
So release and recharge. Uh, then you have minimum service, which is our smallest, lightest brake application. And that's the detented, which means it has a position that it stops at. Once you get past that stop, then you get into what they call the service zone. Uh, that way, based on the operator of that locomotive, can determine where, how much of a reduction of equalized rather where they want to make. Also, uh, the, uh, the operator of that train can go all the way over to the next position, which will be full service, which will give us our maximum brake, re brake application okay, in a regular service rate reduction. After that position, you'll have suppression position, and there's a lot of confusion about suppression position in the railroad industry. A lot of folks think that by going to suppression position, it's the same thing as going to full service, and it's not. Full service has a little slight resistance in the handle right before you get the suppression, and that seems to trip a few people up. But we learn from it, we apply it, and move on. After suppression, we have the over reduction zone. That's the area we're allowed to further reduce equalizing reservoir without having to go back and recharge the brake pipe. After the over reduction zone, you have a notched position <coughs> called handle off, and that's where we put that locomotive uh, in. Uh, in trail or dead position. Uh, that way that locomotive is no longer controlling locomotive, it's a trailing or dead locomotive. And then after handle off you have the emergency position which is, the, which would be with that type of emergency would be called an EIE or engineer induced emergency and that one is at the very end of that quadrant, emergency. Uh, if you're in emergency position something's going on that, that uh, you're probably not liking. Okay? Anyway, so let's get back to, I just want to throw those out there because those are all the different handle positions this automatic brake valve has the ability to create. All right, so we made a reduction. Let's say the operator made a 10 pound reduction of equalizing reservoir. When we started out, we started out, and even though this gauge reads 65, before he moved that handle, equalizing reservoir was at 90 pounds. And at the same time, brake pipe was at 90 pounds. But what we've done is remove the automatic brake valve handle from release and recharge into the application of the service zone and we're watching to make sure that white needle goes from 90 down to 80. Okay? You'll notice I keep talking about equalizing reservoir. Okay? Equalizing reservoir is a controlling pressure in the relay valve. The relay valve is not. Okay? The relay valve on the equalizing reservoir side controls the action of the brake pipe. Okay? So if I had 90 pounds up here, and there's a diaphragm right here, so if I had 90 pounds here and I made a 10 pound reduction, I would now have 80 pounds because I would literally draw down 10 pounds of equalizing reservoir on this single locomotive and it would go up and out the regulating valve at the exhaust part of the regulating valve as evidenced right here. Okay? Once we move the handle and the equalizing reservoir went from 90 down to 80, once again, all the air would stop, the arrows would cease to exist, and I would have 80 pounds here and 90 here. But wait a minute. <clears throat> That's not right. Well, I, I'm slowing it way down so you have a better understanding of how this works. Because what our goal here is to create a pressure differential in the, in the relay valve here. So actually, as I start drawing down from 90 down to 80, at the very same time, brake pipe's doing the same thing. But I always teach it that way so we can slow it down and analyze how this brake valve actually works. All right, so we draw down 10 pounds of equalized reservoir, or excuse me, in this case, sorry about that 10 pounds, we're gonna go to full service, which means we're gonna make a full service reduction of automatic brake valve panel, goes from release and recharge all the way over to full service. We draw down now 25 pounds of equalizing reservoir. There was 90, there is now, look at my gauge, 65 pounds. If we draw that down, it comes down, we draw, 25 pounds out of the equalizing reservoir tank, out of the gauge, out of the pipe, out of the P2A, and then 25 pounds of equalizing reservoir vents out of the regulating valve of the automatic brake valve. At the same time, this diaphragm here, the pressure differential, will move the relay valve to the left, which will in turn will open up an exhaust port, and that exhaust port will take all, which we're going to show you here in a second, take all that brake pipe air, draw it up, and out. And you notice the little thing here is called port Y. <clears throat> don't know if you can see that real well, but port Y is what, is what uh, brake pipe ex exhausts at every time you make a equalizing reservoir reduction. Okay? All right, so a couple little notes here I want to talk about. All components within the dash box are located in the 26C automatic brake valve, which we mentioned earlier. Note the equalizing reservoir circuit, small circuit, about 26 feet, controls the brake pipe, which can, literally can be several miles in length. 
So this little bitty, little bitty guy is controlling this action. This great big guy out there. Okay, <clears throat> and this is really important to learn. All air that is exhausted, all air is exhausted where it was created. So I always teach people that air will exhaust in the valve in which it was created. You always want to remember that, especially for troubleshooting purposes. All right, so we've drawn down 25 pounds of equalizing reservoir, which in turn is going to make all the brake pipe. And let's go to the next slide. I'm not sure if it's going to show it. There it is. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Because, and I always tell everybody, you slow this down. First things first, right? Number one, you move the handle. Number two, we start drawing off 25 pounds of equalizing reservoir, and it simply goes up and out the regulating valve exhaust port. It's that simple. There's a cam where the handle is, there's a camshaft that moves the regulating valve inside the automatic brake valve. That will either apply, uh, it'll either reduce equalizing reservoir or increase it back up to 90. So we made a 25 pound drawdown. 25 pound reduction. So now I have 65 pounds here. I will draw the brake pipe out of that whole locomotive. We're talking single locomotive only. We'll draw that air down, come up. 90 pounds will no longer exist on the brake pipe gauge. It'll actually go down to 65 to match existing equalizing reservoir. It'll go through the vent valve, through around the brake pipe cutoff valve, through the relay valve, and actually go up and out port Y. Whew. All that just by simply moving the handle from release and recharge over to full service. Mm. Amazing. All right, so that's it. You move the handle, equalizing draws down, makes brake pipe draw down. That's pretty simple. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some more. Uh, ah, here we go. A reduction of ER and brake pipe in the amount of 25 PSI has just occurred. And once, and you'll notice what's really, really cool about this picture here, you got equalizing reservoir at 65 pounds. You got brake pipe pressure at 65 pounds. We made a 25 pound reduction of ER first and then brake pipe second. Even though they're pretty close to simultaneously moving at the same time, make no mistake about it, equalizing reservoir here is the boss. Equalizing reservoir tells brake pipe what to do, whether to de decrease or increase. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, one additional component that some locomotives have is a reduction limiting feature. Uh, quite often, uh, that, that component will confuse people, and, that, and the reason they do that is if you have reduction limiting, and I know it sounds a little bit, um, I don't know, what technical, I think is the word we use. On the back of the P2A, right over here, there's a port called Port 24. On a lot of locomotives, that port, or, or, or literally pipe passage, if you will, is open to atmosphere on a lot of locomotives. If Port 24 is attached to a pipe and a tank and a little check valve and when you make a reduction in penalty, penalty reduction, equalizing reservoir won't go all the way down to zero, it'll stop somewhere between 45 and 60 and that'll stop there. So you need to be aware of that. And that's not a defect, that's just how that locomotive is equipped. Okay? All right, Whew. we covered a lot of stuff here already, so let's go on a little bit further. Ah, okay, again. This is what the 26C automatic brake valve looks at. You're sitting right here in the engineer seat. This valve initiates application to release of both locomotive brakes and train brakes. So whatever happens in this valve is going to happen on that 150th car way, way down the, the train. <clears throat> so both locomotive and train brakes by controlling, and that's the key right there, ladies and gentlemen, by controlling equalizing reservoir pressure, which results in controlling a brake pipe air, pressure increases or decreases. When equalizing re reduces, brake pipe reduces. When equalizing reservoir increases, brake pipe increases. That's the way it works, except in emergency. All right? All right, let's go to the next one. Here we have the P2A brake application valve. It's a fairly small valve, compact valve, but does a lot of things. Let's take a look at it. This is a responding type valve that works in conjunction with various safety device components, such as overspeed magnet valve. That's tied into your speed recorder or speedometer whether it be digital or electronic. <clears throat> and those speed limits vary between different railroads. Uh, coded cab signal, magnet valve, if equipped, some railroads have that system. Uh, crew alerter, magnet valve, uh, again, if th they have that system where the engine keeps mashing that yellow button to, to let them know that he's fine and, and everything is good in the world. Automatic train control, uh, if equipped, again, some railroads may have that. Positive train control, which is coming out, uh, and it's I guess a lot of railroads are now dealing with that and, and installing all the components to comply with that federal mandate the, for the positive train control. And a dead man pedal, some railroads still use that as a vigilance device, 
Okay? All right, when activated, the P2A will provide a penalty break application and will also f activate the power cutoff switch, PCS. The P2A functions in the penalty break circuit. Note, and this is the key here, ladies and gentlemen, when the PC switch is activated, two events occur. which drops the load, generator alternator excitation stops, and returns the engine to idle. Governor speed throttle is, goes back to idle. You can stand and move that throttle lever all day long. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen as long as that little guy, that PC switch, is pressurized. That's what that little light, when that little red light on that control stand comes on. And by the way, there's a lot of confusion out there in the world. Uh, when that PC light comes on, okay, you can get, you will get a, P, you're supposed to get a PC light in a penalty, and you're supposed to get a PC light when you're in emergency. And if you don't, you better start troubleshooting, okay? All right, so whew, for a little guy, he does a lot of things. Let's go to the next one. Air gauges. And again, this is part of the equalizing reservoir circuit. This gauge right here. This component indicates air pressure in pounds per square inch. The four types of gauge indications are left. Red, left needle is main reservoir. Equalizing reservoir, left gauge, white needle, which is this one here. Brake pipe, right needle on the right, right, which is this one. And brake cylinder, right gauge, red needle, which is that one right there. The key to learning air brakes is keeping it basic. The key to learning air brakes is repetition. The key to learning air brakes is a dedication to learning that. Um, if you want to learn air brakes, you got to deal with it every day. You pull that book out, you come back to this video, you look at it over and over until you go, I've got this. That's when you learn air brakes. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. And I think that's it. You know, for a little bitty circuit and just moving the handle one time to full service. We went quite a ways. Oh, and by the way, that 25-pound drawdown off the automatic brake valve on that 150th car train, that 150th car finally got that signal, and all that air brake from that last car all the way, went all the way through every car and up to every trailing locomotive and went out that lead locomotive port Y. Now you know why that pipe it's plumbed down underneath the floorboard. It's rather now lousy, uh, noisy, and <laughs> probably lousy. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is uh, not a lot of pressure, but a tremendous amount of volume. Okay. All right. So when you get a chance, if you have any questions, comments, go to www. Excuse me, www.lst-ca.com. Got to get it right. And once again, www.lst-ca.com. Thank you for your support. Keep watching. Good stuff's coming. Thank you and have a safe day.